Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I wanted to do a short tutorial showing how to visualize the state of an aircraft using Simulink 3D animation. Now rather than wasting time trying to explain what I'm talking about, I think it's just easier to show you. So here's an aircraft model that I created. In particular, this is the Research Civil Aircraft or RCAM aircraft for short. If you're interested in the details of how I built this model, I'll leave a link to two videos in the description below or you can reach them by clicking on the card in the upper right of the screen. Now, I've already initialized the necessary variables and ran this simulation. Now, in this case, what I'm doing is I'm loading in some traces of control surface deflections, and then I'm feeding them into the plant model. So if we look at these inputs by just looking at the scope, you can see that, all right, we're definitely deflecting the control surfaces. You can see that, uh, you know, we're fiddling with the ailerons here, and then we, we touch the elevators. Looks like we have absolutely no rudder during this entire run, and both throttles are moving simultaneously and looks like we start at about half power at 50%, then we drop it down to 20% for a while, and then we crank it up to 60% for the remainder of the flight. Now, on the output side, we might be interested in trying to understand how is the aircraft responding, or what does it do in response to these inputs? So, naturally, one of the easiest first cut ways to do this is to just simply hook up a scope to the outputs of the vehicle, which are the states in this case. So if I look at these outputs you can see that we get what appears to be reasonable responses of course that that reasonable is the is the question right now because it's a little bit difficult to understand what the vehicle is actually doing by just looking at these traces. I mean, if we just try to talk ourselves through this, you can see that okay, um, I guess the forward velocity is is increasing. You know, we start down here and it looks like it's increasing throughout most of the flight, which I guess kind of makes sense because if you remember, we cranked up the throttles near the end. Um, we see we've got some non-zero P, Q, and R or roll rates, which kind of influence why these Euler angles might look the way they are. For example we look at five we look at the bank angle looks like we're starting nice and wings level but then we start cranking and banking and then oh, we come back to zero but then whoa this looks like a pretty violent maneuver right here looks like it goes all the way up to to pi and then wraps around the other side and negative pi so it almost looks like we did a roll a full 360 degree roll at this point same thing with theta. I don't know what's going on with the pitch angle, but it looks like it's, you know, we're, we're pulling up and then comes down. I don't know, maybe we're stalling at this point. And looks like psi is also your heading angle is just kind of increasing. So it looks like we're making a constant turn. I guess I would call this maybe a clockwise turn, right? Because psi is just increasing from zero to, uh, looks like it wraps around again. Well, I guess it comes back. I, I guess, long story short, this is the problem, right? If we sit here and we stare at all these traces, it's a little bit unintuitive or hard to visualize what does the aircraft do right what's it actually how's it maneuvering during this uh, this flight so given this I'm sure you're naturally thinking is there a better way to visualize the state of the system than simply looking at traces of the states so luckily for us the answer is yes MathWorks has Simulink 3D animation. This is a system that's going to allow us to build virtual worlds and use Simulink models to drive the states and the orientations of vehicles or other objects within this virtual world. So that's about all of the introduction I want to do in this particular video about Simulink 3D animation. We'll have another dedicated video talking about how to actually build these virtual worlds, but for the purposes of the discussion today, all I want to do is just use existing assets and resources from Simulink 3D animation to to visualize our aircraft. So to do that, I would fire up MATLAB, and MATLAB actually has a lot of great examples of how to use Simulink 3D animation with actually aerospace applications. So one demo that you can pull up is the Aero BLK underscore HL20. So if you enter that in the command window and hit enter, what's gonna come up is a very comprehensive model. And in fact, let me go ahead and pull this over and fold up on another screen for me. But it's a actually it's a simulation of a vehicle or an aircraft, and not only do they simulate the vehicle states, but they use Simulink 3D animation to do cool things like um, rendering the vehicle. So, for example, in this case, you can see what's going on is this is that virtual world that I was talking about. So the Simulink model is definitely solving for the states of the vehicle, and then they are outputting that. If you see right up here, if we come and dig into this block, they are sending the information to this virtual world, which is over here. So if I go ahead and run this model and run this demo, you're going to see what Simulink is going to do 
is it's going to go ahead and render the situation. So you can see the vehicles flying along, the states and the controls and all the dynamics are being solved by Simulink, right? So we could have sent this to scopes if we wanted to see what's going on, but now it's also sending this to this virtual world via the Simulink 3D animation interface, and it's allowing us to see what the vehicle is doing. So you can see it looks like this vehicle is coming in for some kind of landing or something like that. So this is awesome and it would be great if we could leverage this in our simulation in our arcam model so surprisingly that is really easy to do all you have to do is we have to go ahead and find where they define that world so again it's in this visualization block which if i double click this it will bring you to to, to this subsystem and you can see right here is the vr sync block which basically contains definitions and parameters and everything about that virtual world including the interface right including what information do we need to tell that virtual world so it knows where to draw the vehicle so it looks like in this case all we have to tell it is three euler angles right phi theta psi and then something called xe xe maybe what we should do is let's go ahead and turn on our signal dimension so we can kind of see what are they talking about here so we see this is a three element vector this is a three element vector if we trace this back far enough we'll see that this is basically the position in the northeast down frame so this is awesome all we have to do is send it three uh three euler angles three static positions and Basically, we should be able to leverage everything downstream of that within our model. So to do that, why don't we just go ahead and literally, I'm just going to take these blocks, I'll copy them, and now let's come over to our RCAM model, right? This is the other model that we had built, and literally, I will just go ahead and paste these in. And now what I need to do is I need to feed this thing a three-element vector, so let's go ahead and grab ourselves a MUX. Whoops, sorry, hold on. I spelled that completely wrong. Simulink doesn't know what I'm talking about. M-U-X, okay. And I need three inputs, and I need to give this thing phi theta psi, right? That's the first three Euler angles. So we've got that already up here. Let me go ahead and pull off phi theta and psi, okay? And now we need uh, three positions, right? We need the northeast down position, uh, the, yikes, this is going to get a little bit ugly. I guess we can do it something like this. Let me scoot this over, get ourselves a little bit more real estate uh, here. Okay, and again, luckily for us, this is the RCAM model that we have augmented with the navigation equations so that in addition to the uh, nine states that we usually need, it also spits out position northeast down. So great, all I need to do is just kind of repeat that. So I'll go ahead and get position north, position east, and position down. Great, there we go, and then I'll hook it up, and we should be pretty ready to go. So now, if I go ahead and open up this world, so to open up one of these Simulink 3D animation virtual worlds, you just find the VR sync block and then just double click on it. And what it'll do is, let me see, whoopsies, hold on, I brought it up in a different screen, I'll drag that over. So again, this is that familiar world that we saw, we basically are kind of using or borrowing this from the uh, Simulink demo. And what we can now go ahead and do is, let's run our simulation. So maybe what I should do is, uh, let's come back, I should save this first, and let me just reinitialize all the variables to make sure we are on the same page. I'm going to run my initialization script, which basically initializes all the variables and inputs to our RCAM model. And again, let's bring up our virtual world here maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger okay and uh, a couple of things that maybe I'll call out while we're staring at this uh, these virtual worlds come with multiple if you know if the designer has created it they, it can come with multiple viewpoints so you can basically change the uh, camera position if you will of where you want to look at this so I'm gonna use the rear position that's probably a good spot to do this from um, and actually, let's run this. And then one thing that we're going to note is this is probably going to run really, really fast. And maybe I'll note that you can actually go ahead and hit play from this Simulink anim 3D animation virtual world. That's the same thing as if you come back over here and hit play in your Simulink model. So that was, uh, again... Uh, it was running a little bit fast. It was not running in real time. I kind of want to see what this looks like in real time. So again, right now, Simulink is just trying to execute this model as fast as it can. I want to slow it down. So if you remember in our previous video where we were discussing the joysticks, if you come in here to your aerospace block set, animation, animation support utilities, we got a simulation pace block. Let's drag and drop that in here to force Simulink to execute in real time. So now if we run this, we can get a better idea of what's going on. So here we go. So again, 
Uh, and, and you know what might be fun? Maybe we should look at the control surface deflection simultaneously. Sorry. Sorry for uh, flip-flopping around. I just get too excited with this. It's too cool. Let's, uh, let's stop the simulation again. Let's, let's get everything set up nicely. So, uh, yikes. Now where did the, my scope go? Uh, hold on. Let me pull this over here so I can... There we go. Okay. So now we have control inputs, right? And then now, instead of having to stare at the uh, state trajectory traces of the vehicle, I can now look at this cool simulating 3D animation, which shows what the vehicle is doing. So now, oh, see, now we deflect the ailerons and we start inducing a bank. We're playing with the elevator while we're doing this. Look at this. The throttle is down. And yeah, isn't this kind of cool? So we're able to see what the vehicle is doing. And now it looks like that, like we saw earlier, we saw that bank angle flipping over and we're having issues. Now the throttle is coming up and then, yeah, this is kind of interesting. I, the, I, I like this and I also don't like it at the same time. The Simulink 3D animation, the viewpoint that is used for this model is not the best. The camera position gives you some um, weird perspective, so it's a little bit hard to see what's going on. As you can see, we're not really behind the vehicle all the time, so it's a little bit hard to uh, uh, see what's going on. But this is much better than staring at state trajectory traces, right? Okay, and I think we're almost at the end of the simulation, so you can kind of see this is a great way to, to make movies or show what's going on with your uh, system. Now, let me show you one other cool thing. If you think about this long enough, what's really fun about this now is we're in a position where... I could actually, if you watched our previous video on uh, interacting with the Simulink model with a joystick, why don't we go ahead and stick in, instead of slurping in and using a static simulate or a static set of control surface deflections from a file, let's plug in our joystick right here. All right, and as you can see, what I've done now is I've interfaced with the joystick. So now what we're doing is we're using the joystick inputs instead of the uh, from workspace block to create the control surface deflections to drive the model. So now if we can l bring up both the inputs and the simulating 3D animation visualization at the same time, and if we run this, now if you look at this, look at this. I'll pitch the nose down with the joystick. I'll pitch the nose up with the joystick. I'll roll. Isn't this awesome? We are basically, we, I mean, we've created our own flight simulator, right? We are now flying our RCAM model that we built, right? So Simulink is doing a lot of the numerical calculations and the computations to simulate the vehicle. But now I can fly it and use the joystick to create the control inputs. And then I'm using Simulink 3D animation to draw what the actual vehicle is doing in response to these commands. So literally, this is my, this is, you know, this is like, my flight simulator that I've built. I mean, it's not the greatest. It's not, I mean, it's not, you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator or X-Plane by any means, but it's an engineering tool that we can now use to do a lot more interesting studies in the future. So I don't know about you, but I think this is pretty awesome. Um, so uh, I'm just going to fly this for a couple more seconds because it's so darn cool. All right, and I want to show you one other cool feature about simulating 3D animation. Um, tell you what, well, let's come back to the model. Let me let me switch it off of joystick mode, and I'll go back to just using these, uh, you know, constant, repeatable, deterministic inputs uh, to the system. And again, let's bring up the simulating 3D animation world. Okay, now you might be thinking, this is so darn cool. I really wish I could save what's going on, or almost like make a movie of the vehicle flying around. Well, what's awesome about this is you totally can do this. So again, if you open up the world come up here to recording and capture and recording parameters so if you click on that it'll bring up this other dialogue and you can see that you can either write this out to actually I don't think I want to write this out to a whole bunch of TIFF or PNGs instead what I want to do is I want to write this to an AVI file and if I browse for where I want to solve or uh, save that um, usually it's going to default to whatever your current directory is I think that's fine you know this is a good spot to save it you can give it a name if you want or leave this automatic file naming scheme Scheme. But if you hit OK, watch what's going to happen is this little gray button here is going to become red. So if I hit OK, there we go. Now it's red. So now it's ready to record. So if I start recording, this actually is not recording anything right now. It just is, it's kind of getting it ready to record. So now if I hit play here, I'm going to start the simulation. I'm going to be feeding in these constant signals. I'm going to be simulating the output or the, the state dynamics. And then I'm going to visualize that out to my simulating 3D animation animation and uh, to boot on top of all that I'm going to save this out to a file so now let's go ahead and hit play and let this run for a couple of seconds so 
here we go, we're running along, we're flying, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, maybe I should have mentioned um, now might have been a good time to disable this auto <laughs> or the simulation uh, pace block because really uh, when i'm making this movie i don't need to watch this in real time i kind of wanted to just to, to simulate as fast as possible but uh here we go let's let's let this go for a few seconds i think this is good enough let's go ahead and hit stop and now if i come to that folder uh let me see where was the folder uh do 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 do, do. Uh, actually I, I, I now i forgot where the folder was um okay here we go it was it's in this is my current directory so let me copy that let me bring up a file explorer or a windows explorer let's look go to that location oh actually gosh i was already there hey and look at this check this out it made this avi file so if i open up this avi file again whoops it opened in another window sorry guys hold on let me pause this let me pause this let me move it over to this screen look at this this is basically the animation that matlab simulink and simulink 3d animation all colluded together in order to make this cool animation for me so this is pretty darn awesome because now you can embed this in a powerpoint you can send the movie around to whoever you like and i think this is a lot better and a lot easier and a lot cooler to understand what's going on than staring at state trajectory traces now, one more parting shot before we leave this topic. Um, I think if you start playing around with this, you'll see that, yeah, this is this works pretty well, and it's pretty cool, but th it's, a, it's a fair amount of work to make these virtual worlds, and in particular, this particular one that we borrowed from uh, MATLAB Simulink, uh, I actually, like I said, I, I don't really like that the way the viewpoints are set up. I get a little bit disoriented when I try to fly the vehicle with this weird waypoint, uh, weird camera viewpoint that this virtual world decides to use. So while this is great for some of this initial testing, it really isn't quite a full flight simulator. So what I want to look at in one of our future videos is instead of using Simulink 3D animation to visualize the state of the aircraft, can we use a full-on flight simulator like Flight Gear or X-Plane? But that's a topic for another video. So that being said, I think this is a great spot to leave it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. If you just scroll a little ways down and click on that subscribe button, it really does help me continue making these videos. And also, if you liked it or didn't like it, please leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you and uh, get some feedback on what you think about these videos or if there are other topics you'd like to hear about in the future. So uh, until I do hear from you in one of these future videos, I think I'll sign off for now. Talk to you later. Bye.